Right, so today we're talking about margin of error and confidence intervals. Um, and you want to, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to understand what is meant by the terms margin of error, confidence interval, and confidence level. And that's going to be the tricky one, distinguishing between a confidence interval and a confidence level. The two of them are actually kind of related. And then you also want to be able to understand the factors that affect the size of the margin of error and the size of the confidence interval. And we're going to learn that margin of error and confidence interval are also connected in a really, really simple way. So to start us off to kind of motivate what we're doing here, um, what I have is a little snippet of an article that um, was published in, um, it was actually published online a few years ago. This was published by at a website called iPolitics in 2017. And the topic was um, at that time, the federal NDP party was having a leadership race. So the title here is Singh takes slim lead over Angus in a Main Street NDP leadership poll. So it said um, Singh had the support of 27.3% of members was sort of the, the subheading here. Um, then it goes on to say, this is a, a sort of an abridged version of this, uh, of the article. Jagmeet Sin has a slight lead over Charlie Angus in the latest Main Street Research NDP leadership poll, but over one quarter of members remain undecided. From September 7th to 9th, Main Street polled a combination of provincial party lists, because provincial party NDP members are automatically federal members, and recent federal donors reaching 2009 people who are screened for party membership in the process. So what they're talking about in here, just as sort of a side note, they're talking about the sample, what they collected to do their research here. And they want their sample to reflect the population. The population under study here are um, federal NDP party members because it's only the party members that vote for the leader. So they want to make sure that all of the people that they survey are actually members of the NDP party, which they did um, by screening them. Um, also notice in the next uh, paragraph here, after receiving substantial feedback on social media following the last leadership poll, this time around Main Street offered a Punjabi language option in addition to English and French. So they're also dis discussing um, some of the um, difficulties they had in a previous survey or issues that came up while they were conducting their last survey and things that they have done to correct those issues. So kind of like a, what, what I've been asking you to do in your surveys. Here is the part that we are really interested in though. The poll has a margin of error of plus or minus 2% 19 times out of 20. And it's that part at the end that we want to be able to understand. Margin of error plus or minus 2% and the 19 times out of 20. So let's just focus in on that. So here are the key statistics that they give us in this little article snippet. Singh has the support of 27.3% of members. And the poll has a margin of error, plus or minus 2%, 19 times out of 20. Why are they telling us this? Okay, and this goes all back to what we talked about in the last unit about variability in data. So there is variability in this population that they are studying here. If they were to take this poll multiple times, um, with slightly different samples each time, they would get a slightly different result every time. So that 27.3%, they might get a number like 27.9% um, or maybe 26.8%, okay? That percentage of people supporting Singh in this case would change slightly based on the sample that they chose. The margin of error and the confidence interval are attempts to measure or place, place limits on how different that result could be. So how much is that, how, can that 27.3% number change because of the variability in the data, okay? So this is what, so what do we mean by margin of error and confidence interval? We can visualize it kind of like this, okay? We've got that 27.3%, that thing that we measured from the sample. Okay, and then we've got a margin of error of 2%. We can imagine sort of a range of 2% on either side of that 27.3%. So 27.3% plus 2% would give us a value of 29.3%. If we do 27.3% minus 2%, we get 25.3%. 
So what we're saying is that the true value, okay, and remember we talked about this before when we were talking about variability, we have the value that we measure from our sample, and then we have the true value that we'd measure from the population. The true value is in this range. And I'm not going to say in this range, I'm going to say is likely in this range. Okay. So the people who are reporting this number are saying, okay, we measured a value of 27.3%. We know that that might not be the true value, but we're reasonably confident that the true value is somewhere in this range from 25.3% to 29.3% defined by this margin of error. Now, this entire range here from 25.3 all the way up to 29.3 is called the confidence interval. It's the interval that we are reasonably confident that the true value of this thing that we're trying to measure is somewhere in that interval. So our confidence interval is always twice the margin of error, okay? Because it's plus one margin of error greater than the measured value and minus one margin of error um, less than the value. Okay. Now, why do I put this word likely in this range? Okay, because we're still not 100% certain that that value, that true value that we're trying to measure is actually in this range because, again, there is still variability in this population that we are trying to study. And this is where the confidence level comes in. Okay. So our confidence level here is contained, it's the stuff in blue here. So the poll has a margin of error, plus or minus 2%, 19 times out of 20. From the last slide, we are confident that's, that Singh has the support of between 25.3% and 29.3% of the member. This 19 times out of 20 is what we call a confidence level. Okay. What we're saying here is if the poll were repeated 20 times, 19 of those times, we would get a value that is inside that confidence interval or inside that range, 25.3 to 29.3%. Okay. So often um, these confidence levels are expressed as percentages. So if our confidence level is 19 out of 20, we can convert that into a percent. That's 95%. So we are 95% certain that um, the true value is in the range, is in the Let's not say the range, let's say it's in the range defined by the confidence interval. Now, why do we just say 19 times out of 20? Because it's possible that, um, you know, there could be one time that we do the sample and we just get a really, really weird uh, sample from our population and we get a completely different result. Okay, so that's sort of our confidence level kind of takes that into account. So, what are the factors that affect our margin of error or our confidence level? Well, most of these come back just to those same factors that we talked about when we talked about variability. There is, of course, the variability of the population. Okay? The more variable the population is, we're going to have a larger confidence interval. So we'll say large margin of error, <coughs> a larger confidence interval. Okay. The size of the sample has an effect. So if we take a larger sample, we that makes us more confident in our results. So we have a smaller margin of error. 
and hence a smaller confidence interval. The other thing affecting the margin of error or the confidence inter interval is the confidence level that we desire. So going into our survey or going into whatever this thing is that we're studying, we often pick ahead of time how confident do we want to be in our results? Do we want to have a 95% confident level, confidence level? Do we want to have a 99% confidence level? How sure do we want to be of our result? So if we have a higher confidence level that we want, what we need is a larger margin of error or a larger confidence interval. How does this last one work? Why does wanting to have a higher confidence level mean that we need a higher, uh, a larger confidence interval? Well, we can kind of think of this um, confidence interval um, as like a big net, okay? That we're trying to catch the true value, okay? So we can imagine that if we've got um, our margin of error or our confidence interval here is four, call it CI is four, we said that we had a 95% confidence interval, uh, confidence level. So we'll call that CL 95%, okay? If we want to be more certain that we're capturing that true value in this range that we've defined by our confidence interval, well, we have to make that confidence interval wider. It's like we need a bigger net to be more certain that we are catching that true value. So if we want a confidence interval, uh, a confidence level, sorry, of 99%, we would make our confidence interval larger than four, much bigger. If on the other hand, we only need to be, let's say something like, I don't know, 70% certain that we're actually catching that true value, then we don't need to make our confidence interval as wide. We could have something really small like that and just say, well, we're only about 70% certain that our real value is inside there, okay? And always remember that the confidence interval is twice the margin of error. So in each one of these, we have our measured value right at the middle, and the margin of error is just the amount that we go out to either side.